sales numbers to prove it, older generation now discovering another way to enjoy music that comes with some distinctive perks. I think we'll go with a little bohemian rhapsody, gentlemen. Remember the compact cassette? Younger than the record, but older than the CD, they reached their full potential in the 1980s and paired perfectly with the Walkman and Boombox. One of our friends died. She was in a car crash. And after that, we didn't really go out to the pub anymore. We sort of go in twos and threes, but never really in a big gang again. It wouldn't have been the same. And I think about her sometimes when I'm watching the news. I think how little she would recognise about what's going on right now. She died six weeks before the Leave Remain referendum. There's so much terminology she would not even be close to understanding. And I don't really know that much either. Even though I listen to the New Statesman podcast every Thursday, which is really good. But as soon as every episode is finished, I think, yeah, I haven't retained any of that. <laughs> I forgot what it feels like sitting in a pub with your favourite people in the world. A big table and real ale and everyone telling jokes and crisps and should we get some more crisps? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and he was friendly, that bloke I had a piss next to in the urinal wearing an Idols t-shirt. It's a good pub, this, we agree. But back at the big table after a couple more beers, and exchanging life updates. We all admit that we are starting to get a bit scared now. How bad is this going to get? It never used to be like this. Ever. Not how we remember. How did things get so out of control and we have got friends who have fallen out and will never speak again. Any conversation that starts, the thing is, or well, what you haven't read, that'll never work out well. It's getting scared. How did it all end up like this? But I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. I started seeing someone new, which hasn't happened for a long time. And I'm worried she's far too good for me. But let's see how it goes. That's what I say about everything now. Let's see how it goes. Sometimes I look at my friends and think, yeah, we are getting really old now. I used to be so scared about that, but now I quite like it. Look at us, my adorable, chubby, middle-aged friends. I guess my sister doesn't realise how rapidly her baby grows. But I see it in the WhatsApp photos. He is so beautiful. My tiny nephew, who has the same name 
is my boss. <laughs> and life has seemed so much easier since I've been talking to them in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> you're tired. <laughs> That's why you're so grumpy. <laughs> Do you need a little stick? <laughs> Would you like some banana? Don't get any on your tummy. <laughs> Have you been crying all night? <laughs> It all seems so immediate now, doesn't it? Getting old. And the destruction of the planet and the lack of good quality local dentists. And those lives being believed, and not just believed, but celebrated. And occasionally you need to stop yourself and think, what if I am wrong and everyone else is right? You allow your brain to process that with anything. No. How could you think those are the guys for me? How could you tick that box? A couple of weeks ago, I was driving to work. And the last couple of journeys I'd done, I thought, this car isn't driving like it's supposed to. When I get time, I will check that out. But then, it lost all its power, and all the warning lights came on. And I realised, yeah, I'm a bit too late now. Because I, I was able to steer it onto a curb. Put my bonnet up and my hazard lights on, and I don't know anything about cars. And I just sat there. You know, when you were so scared and terrified and confused, I want to pretend something isn't happening, and you just sit there in the driver's seat, putting the ignition again and again, and you know that it's not working, and you run out of options. You sat there thinking, I'm a bit scared now. And I don't know what to do. I felt sick and worried. But a few minutes later, this car indicated and pulled in behind me. And this guy got out and he said, Hello. You are. Right? And it sort of shook my head. And he said, I'm really sorry, I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd check that you were all right. He said, it's horrible, isn't it? He remembers the only time that he ever broke down. At night, without a phone. Stranded, so alone. So he sat with me while... <clears throat> I phoned the RAC and he said, I don't know a lot about cars, but it smells quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I thought that was too. <laughs> and when the RAC guy came up, he said, I'm supposed to list all of the options for you. But I've been a mechanic for 35 years and this car will never drive again. There's no way this car's going to survive. And the next day, we scrapped it. It's gone forever. And I was so sad, but there was something in that hard shoulder that revived something quite exciting within me. This anonymous patient guy wearing an idol's t-shirt who wanted to check that someone was okay and was in no rush to drive away and I drive a lot with my job pretty much every day I drive past crashes 
and bumps and cars in hard shoulders with their bonnets up in their hazard warning lights on, and I never stop. I don't know what to do. I'm always in a rush to get somewhere. I work as a support worker for adults with learning disability. I spend hours going from house to house, working in a community with these people who need help with taking medication and cooking and getting out and about. And there's one man that I support and I went round to his house and he told me that I had my jumper on inside out. And I thought, who is supporting who? <laughs> <laughs> who is in charge of this wheel? But he laughed about it. I've been doing it for three years now. It's minimum wage, but I quite like it. And I like things too. Half of my life as a support worker, half as a writer. Maybe I'll do that forever. I hope so. One of the people I support is non-verbal. And on my first day in my job, I was told, you will not be able to deal with her. She is too much. The only thing that makes her happy is being in a car and going to cafes. I said, that's all right, I'll just take you in a car to cafe. <laughs> they said, you won't believe how much she changes. And I sat with her with my tap water in the cafe. And she sat there with her decaf latte and her face was so happy. And at first I thought it would be good if I could just get a book out. Or maybe look at my phone and read some things. But that would be rude. Pretty quickly I learned to embrace the solitude of her company. This permission to zone out from this horrible world. I don't have much going for me. But at least I can offer this continuity. Someone for her to sit in a cafe with. And that's what I worried about when we were waiting for the RAC. How was I going to do my job without a car? I don't have much money. None of us do. Support workers. I've got a tiny bit saved, but I was worried about having to buy a cheap, shitty car that wouldn't last more than a few miles. But someone I worked with knew someone who knew someone who knew someone who was selling a polar. <laughs> <laughs> when I got to his house, he said, look, I'm not going to ask for any money. This car has been with me my entire adult life, and it is good. My girlfriend is a mechanic, and she's kept it in good name. She said, he said, it doesn't have electric windows, you have to Wind it down with your elbows, but that is good exercise. <laughs> and he said it was a very specific way of how you have to open up the petrol cap. But you'll get used to it. And he said, I hope you have got some cassettes. Because this car, it's not got a CD player and the radio. Is broke. But there's some Jamiroquai <laughs> <laughs> the glove compartment if you need it. <laughs> and I said to him, look at me. I don't have many things in life. But I have got tapes. <laughs> I said, if there is one thing I have in life, it is tapes. 
Sometimes we don't know when we need to revisit the past. Sometimes we would just choose not to go back there. But then sometimes we are forced to. And the rest of this story this is what happens when you are forced to <laughs> revisit your old tape. 